Okay. I think the clip that best summarizes my feeling right now is... What could possibly go wrong? Let's get to it. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for this season finale of Supernatural Season 7 Survival of the Fittest, and I am very happy to say that the episode review portion of this season is over. After a very tumultuous, very much down, or just boring season with lacking story, lacking plot building, and just a ton of stuff that was much more interesting but that wasn't the central focus, finally coming to a close. I'm just happy that the season's over. I remember now why I don't remember a lot of this season. I remember why I wasn't fond of this season. This season just ends on a fart. <laughs> this season finale has the brothers figuring out a plan of how to take on Dick Roman with the blood and the bone and everything, while Crowley is making a plan with Dick to obviously screw him over, all the while, Bobby is on a fucking rampage as a ghost, but eventually comes to the realization of what he is, and we finally get a send-off. An actual, actual send-off for the guy. Now, admittedly, most of the time, in most cases, when you saw a character die and then only to be brought back to die again, which Supernatural was obviously known for, would be a bit exhausting, but I feel that they did that part well. If honestly, it's the best part of this episode. Bobby comes to the realization that he cannot control who he is, and he decides to leave before Dick is even taken care of. He is leaving that behind because he realizes that he is more of a detriment than anything else, and I like how they shot it. I like how you look at the flask and you see the ember of him glowing and going on to the beyond from Dean and Sam's perspective. You're looking at them and you're seeing their emotion. I thought that was probably the best part of this episode. Sure, there was some funny bits with Crowley. It was great to see him again, and they are once again setting him up as the villain of the show, as they did kind of in the last season. But the part that just blows me away is how fucking easy it is that they killed Dick Roman. Now, obviously, they do use Cass as a teleportation device and also a sight line for the Dick Roman thing, but the amount of conveniences that happen in this, and then just the end where they stab him, and he's like, oh, 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 that, you think I got a trump card? And they just stab him again. Like, what was the point of that? What honestly was the point of that? Did they have something else in mind? Like there was going to be a fight scene, some sort of big battle blowing up the facility or something along that lines. I don't understand why Dean has both of them in his jacket. You know how fucking awkward that would be? It would have made way more sense that Cass did it. Cass is finally getting past his weird cuckoo-ness and his inability to accept what he has done. Like he is fully taking responsibility and making amends for what he did by stabbing Dick in the back. And then at the end, Crowley even says that they're not all dead. He just killed the head of the Leviathans. Without a master plan, the Levi's are just another monster. Hard to stomp, sure, but you love a challenge. What the fuck is that? But if I am correct, they don't fucking come back. They are gone. They just basically get wiped off of the face of the earth despite having enough infrastructure in the United States to basically take over the world. They just disappear because even Jeremy Carver and the writers thought, wow, these things fucking suck. I'm just amazed at how poorly and lazy, like it really dips into that Robert Singer laziness vibe that he would very much become to know for, at least in my opinion. That's what the entire final five minutes reeks of. Okay, I can make one other amendment. Another part that I did enjoy was the ending. He's all by himself. He has no one else to rely on. Dean and Castiel got vaporized to somewhere else. Kevin is being taken by Crowley, and that's it. Whereas when we jump to where Dean is, he's in purgatory. And then Cass is like, yeah, we're probably gonna be ripped to shreds. And Dean's like, well, what the hell do we do? And he turns back and Castiel's gone. I love it. I actually like the desperation. The ending of this season had me more enthused about the show than the entirety of the season did. That's how poor season seven is. Is it as bad as the dab era? I could maybe say no because there were some decent episodes here and Sarah Gamble did have at least some good episodes in season six, but holy shit, no wonder they got rid of her. No wonder they just figured that this wasn't gonna work with her anymore because season seven dipped the show into a level of crap that I never thought it would recover from. This season is what basically gave Dab the ability to have his seasons from 
13, 14, and 15 be as bad as they were. A lot of people were like, well, season seven was really bad. Thankfully, Carver was able to bring it out, but it's not a fun finale. There's a few gleaming moments here and there, like Bobby uh, being let go, or the ending where Dean and Castiel are in purgatory and you have absolutely no idea how they're gonna get out of there. But that's it. Considering how poorly everything was set up, how poorly everything was configured in this season, you would have thought that at least the last episode of the season would have been entertaining. And sure, the car bit with Meg was interesting, even though there's clearly two people in the car, but then when she gets out, it's just Meg. So I don't know what they were doing there. I, maybe the opinion was that Cass was in the car too, but then how is Cass in the car, but he has to go and get Dean. There's a lot of elements that just kind of feel like they just needed to finish this season. It was the first time they ever did 23 episodes. And while one more episode might not seem like a, a lot, there was a phase, if you go and look at certain television shows that were doing 23 to 25 episodes, late 90s, early 2000s, it was exhausting. Like, I'm still amazed that X-Files and Grey's Anatomy and even Malcolm in the Middle second season got 25 episodes, because that's fucking exhausting. So finally, Dick is dead. We have some possible interest of what's going to happen with the show continuing on. But do I find this season finale good? No. I don't. Is it one of the worst ones they ever made? No, but it's still so fucking forgettable. It's exactly what the epitome of this season was, just forgettable. Season six looks like a shining example of what to do better than to this season. So in the end, I'm going to give the season finale for Supernatural season seven a three out of seven. It just ending on a wet fart, guys. That's it. But it's fucking done. It's fucking done! Okay, well, actually, let's see what you guys had to say. Hey, guys, apologies for putting this up late. Uh, I've admittedly been in a coma for the last little while. Not an actual coma, just a sick coma. So when I saw what time it was, I was like, oh, crap, I've got to put this together. This was one of my top finales for the show when I first watched it, and it hasn't kept that place over time, but I still enjoy it. Always really enjoyed the performance of the actor who played Dick Roman. I felt this episode has some better material he was given to work with. His dialogue and, per and presence in this episode lifts it up for me, especially in his opening scenes with Crowley. He made a decent adversary for the boys with his cutthroat personality and intelligence, although he is not one of the strongest overall villains, admittedly. I'm not proud of this, but I used the lame quote, I'm pleased as punch to have you all here for a couple of years afterwards. Embarrassing to look at back on. I'm glad that Bobby was brought back from the edge of, of the rabbit hole he was sinking into and given a respectful but haunting close to his story. I felt the ambiguity of which side Crowley and Cass will come down on pre uh, built prep tension into the episode. It was cert uncertain how the boys would end up uh, after all the was said and done. Overall, I really enjoyed the pacing, writing, and twist. The biggest issue I, I use I had was the Leviathan completely disappearing from af with Dick's death, that being poorly written. But it makes sense considering the backlash against the storyline. I also think the trip into Purgatory doesn't make that much sense in how Dean was pulled there by standing close to exploding Dick, but I liked it. Looking forward to the season, your season review, and I shall see you for season eight. You're probably the one of the most positive people about season seven. I, I'm happy you have such positive outlook on it, but I, as you guys can see, I, I did not. I did not have a very positive outlook on this season at all. Once again, Supernatural kills a supremely powerful being in the easiest way possible, which will begin to become a regular thing for the show onwards, and it annoys me that they didn't even get scuffed up fighting Roman. Remember when Yellow Eyes tore Sam and Dean apart at the end of Season 1, and now they're not even a scratch against Roman? Also, Purgatory looked super badass at the end. I thought that they were going to legit have CGI beasts only for a huge letdown knee. Yeah, both of those things are very prominent. It, it's one of the most easiest ways to take down Roman, and the ending of uh, 8 with that idea of being in Purgatory, I thought they were going to be there forever, but obviously that does not happen. It's very much akin to the beginning of season four. I went to season seven expecting to absolutely hate it, but honestly, I enjoyed it quite a lot. It dragged on a fair bit, but I like still liked it. Not sure if it's just me or being super duper into it or watching numerous episodes a day, found it was more palatable than season 11, uh, for example. And then there was a big conversation there. And I was like, what? Uh, but no, thank you for, like it was a good discussion apparently with uh, other people there. 
The season 7 finale is truly one of the weakest finales, right behind 12, 13, 14, and 15. It's so anticlimactic to me. Even when Dick gets killed, it felt so lame. Uh, I agree on that end, Angela. Survival without, the Survival of the Fittest is, uh, without a doubt, the weakest season finale of this series for me personally. And I'm going to do my best to simplify why I love it and why I have problems with it. Oh, I'm already interested. The fight scene with Sam and the maid is goofy. Not as goofy as Dean fighting Lucifer in season 13. Yeah, that was pretty goofy. But even Robert Singer says in the audio commentary that he's not too fond of filming it. Meg's capture from the other demons is anticlimactic. It would have been nice to see it going a little darker, like when Crowley captured Sam's college buddy Brady, putting him in a devil's trap uh, over his head. But instead, we get a Star Wars-y force push and two unnamed Medinian minions got her. And the last issue, of course, is Dick's defeat is too easy, and of course the brothers get separated again. That part just confusing overall is how Castiel got his insanity landing in Purgatory. Okay, now the stuff that I actually enjoy. I love how when the boys get all covered in blood and righteous bone, and then they're pouring the blood on the bone and they're expecting something spectacular, special effect, and instead nothing happens. Oh, that was funny too. And it's amazing to think that after seven years, finally the Impala gets the song Born to be Wild. As cheesy as it is to see the Leviathans get together for a board meeting, the meeting itself is sinister and creepy. It's so damn relatable for corporate, uh, corrupt corporate businesses, especially for what they do to Polly. Dick Roman is superb as a Leviathan leader. I absolutely love how he we see Sam and Dean's reactions from Bobby vanishing to the other side. Normally, when we see a ghost burning, they're screaming in pain, so that's just a beautiful, haunted nature of Bobby disappearing for good. The way they utilize him later on in the show, I think, is absolutely decent enough, and I respect if it if nobody feels that way. I also love how Crowley is depicted throughout the whole episode. I love that Dean and Castiel go to Purgatory more than the execution of how it happened. No, actually, I get that too. I actually enjoy how it ends like i like the last couple of minutes of this episode probably more than anything else survival of the fittest is an okay episode not really that epic it's a week it's the weakest finale up there with 12 13 14 and yes 15 i enjoyed this season it's not the worst but not the best but damn it's still somewhat of a bored improvement from season 15 i really hate 15 and 14 but be aware, Supernatural Season 8 first half is definitely slow as hell, and Part 2 is where it gets good. Well, at least I have that looking forward to me. Alright guys, thank you for your comments. Thank you for following me along this journey. I do again apologize for being as lackluster and as being as kind of lazy with this myself. Uh, admittedly, the season's laziness brewed laziness in me. I was off of my schedule. Like, once season eight does come around, I'm probably going to be a better for that one, I hope. But do give me credit, I'm probably going to take a supernatural break after this. Either way, season review is coming up, so make sure to give me you guys' comments about that. You can be as lengthy as you want. Um, that's fine by me, because I would like to see what you guys have to say about it. And then, obviously, best and worst will appear. So, we'll be coming to that too. Might do a poll, we'll see how that goes. But, anyways. Thank you guys again for watching. I know it's been a little bit of a lackluster a little while. I've been seeing the view numbers have not been very high, and I don't blame you. But hopefully most of you guys who have been kind of absent for a little while, maybe you might come back for Season 8. We'll see. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, I'll see you guys for the Season review.